Well, welcome back, uh, uh, and, and thanks. First of all, thanks for the for the opportunity for me to to talk here. Um, so I'm from the Open University, so I'm I'm another academic, but uh, I hope this talk is not going to be too academic. Uh, I want to talk about the Urban Data School, which is a new initiative uh, which we started uh, last year at the Open University as part of a big smart city project, um, which we have in Milton Keynes. Now, Milton Keynes, I know it's not your favorite place, uh, but it's actually a, a nice place to live if you live outside. Um, no, I, I, do, I do like it. it. It's always been a city of the future. Um, and uh, it, it still is, this, and we're moving in a different future um, because we have a smart city program uh, the Open University, together with uh, a large number of companies, BT, E.ON, the Council very much involved, other universities, Cambridge universities. So we, we got a, luckily we got a, a huge pot of government funding uh, to do some interesting stuff. Um, and we're trying, to, we're trying to do something which actually benefits the city. Um, now... Just very quickly, so Milton Keynes is actually a success story. It's, it's a growing city. It's a very fast growing city, but it also creates challenges at the same time. Um, and these challenges are sort of in all different areas, physical infrastructure, environmental aspects, uh, citizen services. And to optimize and, and find the right path forward is actually not very easy. Um, so what a successful city is and the pathways are not very clear and we're trying to do something in, in this context that on the wet one hand has economic benefits but actually uh, also has environmental benefits. And so that's why this is relevant for the discussion today. Now if you know one thing about it, Milton Keynes, perhaps it is uh, these pods and they <laughs> represent one vision of a smart city. Now, we are going to get these pods in Milton Keynes uh, this year, a few to test them out and, and to see how they actually work in a city context. And that's all very nice. I'm excited and I'm the first one who's going to jump on those. But this just represents one vision of a smart city. Great new technology dropped from the sky onto the city and then people have to figure out, well, what are we going to do with that? Is that really necessary? It's certainly fun, innovative, creative, and so I'm all for it. Now, here's another vision of a smart city, which you might recognize a little bit more if you're working in data. Now, we are building a data hub for Milton Keynes, and we identify a large number of data sets, and we bring them together, and we make them available, we provide analytical services and so on. And this is ongoing. So this is a physical data hub, um, but the data collections and the, and the services are really the one, the, the thing that, that, are, that is important. So you're probably familiar with that. And we have sort of a target of three to 5,000 different data sets that are relevant and interesting for, for Milton Keynes. So this is not necessarily a new story because many other cities do that as well although we do not only focus on open data, but also proprietary data, uh, data that has very restrictive rights and limitations. However, so what I want to talk about is actually the next generation. So we can do a lot of things today in the smart city or in the future city or turn cities into uh, uh, smart cities. What I want to talk about is what do we do that the next generation is actually ready to jump uh, into these developments. And so there are large numbers of kids in Milton Keynes, like in other cities. And if you remember your school education, and it was very similar to my school education, well, my might be a little bit further away than sort of the average here, but um, there was very little hands-on practical experimentation. I did get to play with computers outside of the classroom and at school. Uh, but there is certainly no data education really happening in schools at this moment. Open data is certainly not a topic. ICT computing, computing is just starting to appear in, in, in schools, and schools have a hard time. So the Urban Data School is a new initiative 
which we are hoping to turn into a venture, a social venture, that turns the increasingly large number of data sets which are available in all the different data stores into a learning resource for kids to make sense of the world and understand uh, important uh, phenomena in the world in social life about their, their, uh, their, uh, uh, their own lives. And so we want to connect, our goal is to connect every single school in Milton Keynes physically to the data hub, but more importantly, allow teachers and kids to get access to the data sets and to use them in education, in the formal education, in the classroom. And this is not a trivial challenge, I can tell you. Um, so, and there are many different aspects uh, around data education and bringing data skills into the schools, learning the raw data skills, how do you actually use data, how to use data as evidence, how do you use data to tell a story, um, how do you connect data to what you learn in computing, for example, geography, sociology, uh, physics, math, it connects to all these different topics and we are starting to work with schools over the last year and a half we have started to work with schools and teachers are excited about this, not every single teacher, but teachers are in general excited about this and see the potential, but it's a rough going um, and we are certainly going forward uh, to make it easier for schools. So here you see some of the kids relatively young uh, having some nice spiky graphs about electricity, something which you haven't seen perhaps before. Now, at this point, we actually do everything on paper um, because we don't yet know what kind of technology actually is required in the classroom. We don't want to bring iPads and application into the classroom before we actually understand what we are doing and what is actually required, what teachers require, what kids want to do. So we're doing exercises, paper exercises, and we bring visualizations into the classroom uh, and so on. And uh, this is exciting because I have kids in this uh, age range and I want to see them uh, something like this. Now what we find is that if you contextualize the data and make it relevant to the lives, then kids really get excited about this. So we've brought satellite images into the classroom, which we were working with the satellite applications catapult as part of the Smart City project in Milton Keynes. Now here's an image that identified already all the current or potential solar panels in Milton Keynes on the roofs. Now the first thing kids do is, where do I live? Do we have solar panels? Is it actually on the map? Uh, where's my school? Why don't you have solar panels? So looking at sort of where they live and the local context and they start looking at it and, and they are inquisitive. They want to understand what's going on because it is about them. And that, is, that was a very important observation which we made. Open data, urban data is sort of abstract, is over here, kids are here. So we need to merge that and bring this together. Uh, and that, uh, that is what we are doing now. Now, what are we actually doing? So we're trying to make urban data relevant for education. So we're trying to identify questions which can be answered with the data which we have. For example, you probably perhaps, or today's kids learn about energy, solar energy, renewables in the classroom, but it's textbook learning and it's pretty much very high level. So here we uh, ask, for example, questions, well, how much solar energy could we actually generate in the whole of Milton Keynes? And the data sets actually give us very precise results. Now, if 6.6 .6 million kilowatt hours per year is meaningful for kids, we don't know yet. It is, it's the education that is required to make it meaningful. We can relate it to homes, how many homes, how many families can you support, uh, and so on. Um, and we can also look at how, many, how much energy could we generate if we put solar panels onto every single roof. 
uh, or now with the idea about put, so putting solar panels into, into windows, we can do that. And we're starting, as we acquire new data sets, we are flying drones and aerial surveys uh, to get uh, heat uh, image materials and identifying the potential for ground heat uh, source. Uh, this, is, this is more in this direction. But also then we can go, how, many CO, how much CO2 could we actually save in terms of tons that comes also out of this data? It's not directly in the data, it needs to be analyzed. But that's what we're doing with the uh, satellite applications catapult. And you can understand that all of a sudden the city becomes a potential generator of energy which is used in the city and kids can understand where the potential is and how far away we are and it's actually relevant and actionable and informs not just their thinking, but probably also their practices. Now here's another question. Do solar panels actually make sense for your family? So where do you live? How much light intensity are you gonna get onto your roof depending on orientation, size, and so on? How does it relate to how you use energy? So typically, of course, uh, solar generation has a peak in the middle around noon. Uh, demand uh, is somewhere in the afternoon. Now, this is an important observation kids actually need to make to understand just because you put solar panels on the roof, you don't get necessarily free energy, uh, which you can use. So what can you do? Well, maybe you can shift your demand. We do the washing uh, uh, when we actually have an energy. Uh, and this is a representation that's also coming from a data set of doing laundry, one family doing laundry across one month. Um, and the green represents the amount of green energy they used. And this is an actual data set from an actual household in Milton Keynes. And we have lots of this data, which we w collected with, with, uh, with Eon. And you can see if, if you shift these things around and you can reflect on your behaviors, but not just, oh, wouldn't it be nice? And yes, of course we need to save, but actually you can measure and calculate and understand what kind of impact that actually has. Here's another one. Why isn't everyone driving an, an electric vehicle? Well, range anxiety, how much do I actually do some driving and does it fit? So this is another, another data set. This is based on the, the underlying data set is 75,000 miles of electric vehicle uh, driving behavior. And this is a representation of one day in the life of a electric vehicle owner. This is plugged in, charging. These are all journeys. So this is uh, the, the electric vehicle usage translated into a clock metaphor. Uh, and that also gives you an understanding of daily practices and use of an electric vehicle, so the demand profile. Um, but then you can compare that to raw data, and I know you can't necessarily read this, but here we are looking at how much energy does a home actually generate from solar panel, how much energy f uh, is required to drive an electric vehicle, and we can answer the question, can you power an electric vehicle with your solar energy? And the surprising answer is almost yes, <laughs> except you need battery storage in your home. But uh, a number of households in Milton Keynes generate enough electricity to power their electric vehicle and be happy to all their daily driving. Um, now, this is all in the data, and all of a sudden, this question becomes not just an esoteric, abstract question, but a very concrete question which kids can argue about. So what are we currently doing, having done all of this stuff, the preliminary work? Um, we are trying to figure out how do you actually teach all these skills, and how do you bring them into the schools? We need to curate data set data sets, and I mean, certainly the, the ODI probably knows that, but uh, the number of high quality, useful data sets is a very, very limited. Most data sets are, have arrows in it, nobody documents anything. So we had data sets where we generated lots of energy from solar panels at midnight, and we figured out, well, something <laughs> must be going on here. And that was an obvious error, but other errors. Um, so, 
uh, and but not just energy. Energy is something because we're working with Eon, so we have access to this. We are now looking at transport data. So we need to look, and this this is hard work, not only to get the data sets, but make them useful, and then understand how do they actually connect to uh, what we want to teach in, in, uh, in the school. And finally, a little bit of technology. We are building a platform so that all the schools have access to it, and then hopefully, not just Milton Keynes, but the rest of the world as well.